I'm meteorologist Carly Gomez, and we are tracking a lot of thunderstorms across the state, including heat advisories, excessive heat warnings in place for most of California. But everything will be changing pretty quickly as we move into the weekend. We are tracking a lot of moisture coming in from areas of Mexico, just off the coastline there from Acapulco, just there west of Puerto Vallarta. We expect this system, Tropical Storm Hillary, to be pretty significant in bringing in a lot of moisture, thunderstorms, potential for flash floodings, and yes, may even make landfall as a hurricane or tropical storm into California. As we've been tracking most of the movement here, making its way up the coastline, we do anticipate that moisture moving into Southern California, bringing in some uh, series of flash flooding potential as well as those strong winds. Now, it may also start moving its way up Northern California, which could be a little bit scary for a lot of people dealing with potential for thunderstorm chances as we continue on into the middle of August. Now, I want to bring this up because tropical storms are not common in California. We often do get the remnants of tropical storms, a lot of them, in fact, that do bring in flash flooding, a lot of rain during even portions of the summer months, and that does lead to even debris flows, power outages, and even entire homes coming down from mudslides. But when it comes to an actual tropical storm, hitting and making landfall, it's not pretty common. Most recently, the most, uh, the only real tropical storm making landfall here was in 1939. That was tropical storm near Long Beach, and that was quite a while ago. Before that, the only known hurricane to impact Southern California was in 1858, and that was the San Diego hurricane, but it actually never made official landfall. It kind of fell apart just near the Catalina Islands there, but it did bring big impacts as it saw a lot of flooding for the area, as well as uh, the obvious wind gusts, uh, potential to see a lot happening there in terms of uh, really bad hurricane force winds. Now let's talk about this tropical tracker. As we track Hillary, we are seeing that a lot of that moisture is being conjured up closer here to Mexico. And this is important to point out because we have been seeing a lot of formations, especially later in the season. It's not you know, uncommon to see hurricanes forming late in the season. They typically get their strongest later in the season. But here's what makes this one different. We have been seeing a series of hurricanes coming off this exact area and moving its way all the way west into the central Pacific. We saw it with Hurricane Dora impacting Maui. Before that, Greg, Fernanda is just out there off to sea, and that moisture from Fernanda is actually bringing in quite a bit of moisture for Northern California spots, bringing some thunderstorms to the area as well. Now, as we take a look at Hillary, this one here is dealing with a lot of heat near the coastline where it likes to be. But with all the previous tropical storms that have made their way to the central Pacific, that is causing a lot of what we call upwelling that brings in with all the strong winds, cooler air under the water to the surface. Hurricanes, tropical storms do not like cool water. They like it where it's nice and hot and warm. They need 80 degree temperature. So this one here is going to be sitting right around the coastline mostly. And the track and predicted track for this potential hurricane looks like it wants to veer just toward the west there as it becomes a category two hurricane as of about Thursday night, but then kind of starts to veer closer back toward areas of Mexico, Baja California, trying to seek out much warmer water. We know a little further north, there is a pocket of cold water up there and it's just going to try to seek out the warmth. So as we continue tracking this system, looks like it starts to veer off into Baja California, becoming maybe at landfall there if it begins making landfall, a category one hurricane and then a tropical storm. So maybe a cat one right around there at that peninsula and then finally making its way up just through Tijuana into areas, maybe even Chula Vista right there into San Diego up as a tropical storm system. If it holds on to that strength, it'll still be at landfall as a tropical storm. And again, remember the last tropical storm that was in 1939. So we will see a lot of moisture with this strong wind gusts as well as that potential for downpours and flash flooding. Now eventually becoming a low pressure system as it makes its way through Orange County toward Los Angeles. But the moisture from this is gonna be impactful. For Northern California spots, we're gonna to continue to see the potential for thunderstorms. Now we've been seeing it all week with thunderstorms even expected into Thursday and Friday. But as you track the moisture coming off that system, I want you to see this here. This will start making its way up into Southern California then eventually into Northern California, you start to see a lot of that rain 
That starts making its way for most of the state here of the Central Valley into Sacramento, mostly areas toward the east there and through Tahoe. And then if we do see it move its way all the way into Northern California and the Northeast here, this area is typically very dry. We don't get a lot of rain usually in that spot unless we're seeing those thunderstorm chances, but we are looking at a system here moving all the way up into areas of Oregon. Now, I want to show you the 10-day quickly because you'll kind of see how it's playing out. With these systems, often comes some cooler air, cloud coverage, but a lot of humidity. We'll see the weekend temperatures right around these mid to low 90s. A lot of cloud coverage still, but check out Tuesday. That landfall for that storm is expected Sunday night into Monday into areas of Baja, California, and potentially San Diego. But as it makes its way closer to us from Monday to Tuesday, we are seeing a lot of cloud coverage with temperatures there in the upper 80s.